Shifting focus to Afghanistan, which continues to crumble under the Taliban's onslaught from border areas and countryside. The battle has now reached urban centers and provincial capitals. The chances of a government victory are slowly but definitely slipping away. The odds are visibly stacked against Kabul. As the Taliban juggernaut thunders through the country, the situation is like a train wreck in slow motion. Let me begin by showing you Afghanistan's map. This is what it looks like today. 229 districts in Taliban control, 112 districts contested, only 66 are in government control. Look carefully. The terrorists have completely surrounded government areas and looking at the speed of their offensive, a sweep seems all but imminent. In the last 72 hours, at least six provincial capitals have been captured by the Taliban. This includes Shebargan, Zaranj, Kunduz, Sarepul, Talokan and Ebak. Now with these capitals besieged, these provinces are now in full control of the Taliban. The city of Kunduz, Afghanistan's far north, is one of the most significant to fall till now. It's situated barely 300 kilometers away from Kabul. It is considered a gateway to Afghanistan's mineral-rich northern provinces. Kunduz has highways connecting almost every major city in Afghanistan. These routes are also used for illegal smuggling of Afghan opium and heroin to Central Asia. So controlling Kunduz means controlling one of the most important drug smuggling routes in the country. Besides this, there are several government offices, army bases, commercial institutions in the city. They could now fall into the hands of the Taliban. Some of them already have. In a new video, the Taliban are seen removing a portrait of Afghan President Ashraf Ghani as they took over the Kunduz municipality office. Look at these images. This has sparked fears that the government is now rapidly losing control of the city. Afghanistan's interior ministry says that government forces are putting up a fight. And they're hopeful that the enemy will soon retreat. The enemy attacks in Kunduz, Shibargan, Samangan and Sarepul provinces are ongoing. The security forces have had resistance and advances in Kunduz and other cities. The enemy has suffered big losses. After coming under pressure, the enemy is now moving towards Mazar and Pule Khumri cities. But unfortunately, the security belts in Mazar are strong and the enemy has suffered casualties. The enemy may retreat, but how long will the government forces be able to hold them back? Let's look at Afghanistan's map again. The terrorists now control almost 90% of the country's border. The border with Turkmenistan in the northwest is fully in Taliban's control. So is the border with Uzbekistan and Tajikistan in the far north and the border with Iran in the west. Even border areas along Pakistan have been blocked. Let me show you some images now. These are from Afghanistan-Pakistan border, where hundreds of civilians have been stranded after the Taliban closed a key crossing on Friday. This is the spin Boldak crossing near the Pakistani town of Chaman. The Taliban captured it last month from Afghan forces and placed a concrete barrier to block the crossing point. Nobody is being allowed to cross now, no matter their reasons. <laughs> We came here to attend a funeral three days ago. Now the border is closed. We are sitting here. We have no food and no money. We cannot go to a hotel to sleep for the night. I appeal to the Taliban leaders to find some solution for us. We are going back to Afghanistan. We have been waiting here for the last two days. And this patient is very sick. They have closed the border and we just want the Taliban to open the way for us. The people are suffering, no doubt, but the biggest victim will be the government of Afghanistan with almost all border routes now in the Taliban's control. Kabul is going to have a hard time securing essential supplies. This includes military supplies as well as food supplies. The only option remaining is to airlift these supplies, but making them land unharmed in Kabul is still going to be quite a task. The United Nations says what lies ahead is an acute humanitarian situation which will be extremely difficult to deal with. Afghanistan is now at a dangerous turning point. Ahead lies either a genuine peace negotiation or a tragically intertwined set of crises. An increasingly brutal conflict combined with an acute humanitarian situation and multiplying human rights abuses. In this dire situation, 
the UN and humanitarian partners continue to be present to assess, of course, the needs and where possible to deliver assistance where we have the access. But this is becoming increasingly difficult. The situation is indeed becoming increasingly difficult and the human toll of this tragedy extremely distressing. On Sunday, the terrorists killed a young woman in the province of Bulk. What was her crime? Wearing tight clothes apparently and stepping out without a male relative. The woman was only 21 years old. She was wearing a burqa or a veil, but apparently it wasn't Islamic enough for her killers. And the killing comes barely weeks after the Taliban passed a new decree ordering Afghans to provide a list of girls above 15 years or below 45 years of age for sex slavery and marriage with their fighters. And the stakeholders in Afghanistan made these fanatics sit at the same table as them to discuss peace, expecting them to mend their ways. They achieved nothing, obviously, and they're now offering explanations, words that mean nothing. The Taliban claim to want international legitimacy. These actions are not going to get them the legitimacy they seek. Uh, they do not have to stay on this trajectory. They could choose to devote the same energy to the peace process as they are to their military campaign. We strongly urge them to do so. This is what the Afghan people so urgently need, deserve, uh, after decades of war, and is very much in Afghanistan's neighbor's interest to invest renewed energy into a peace process that promotes a peaceful Afghanistan and stable region. You heard that. It is in the interest of Afghanistan's neighbors to invest renewed energy into peace. That's convenient. You invade a country, promise to wipe out terror, fail to achieve your objectives, make things worse, retreat in the dead of night, and then put the onus on the country's neighbors to clear the mess that you created. Invest renewed energy into peace, say the Americans. If only America had put the same energy in understanding the pitfalls of its approach in Afghanistan, the country wouldn't be where it is today. Vion is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.